calls. How is it, um, I've noticed this, that if I have an actual Army.mil document that's on Army.mil saying that they are preparing hundreds of thousands of employees and private contractors to man emergency centers with re-education camps for the American people. If I, guys, just type in re-education camp Army manual. No one attacks me on it. No one says it's not true. There's no Rachel Maddow. There's no CNN. There's no... They'll just go make up something I said and attack that straw man. They'll never. They know it's real FM 39-40 and others. But they won't even address it. I mean, you've been around these people. Uh, I mean, I've been around them. What's weird is at that level, though, they're so sycophantic and such cowards. They're not like some special forces captain or colonel or general, totally freaked out, hiding out in the middle of nowhere with their family because they know too much. At least they don't love it and think it's cute because they're real people. It's the soft, weird cowards are the ultimate progenitor of the takeover. They're giving birth to it because they never were on hard times. They never got beat up. They never went through real hell. They never saw real evil. They're divorced from it, sitting back with the instrumentality of high-tech enslavement, playing the instrument like they're virtuosos. Proud of themselves, not seeing that they stand in the jaws of a huge, stinking, red-eyed anglerfish that is their papa, but it isn't their papa. I mean, they don't get that at the top of the pyramid, you can smell the death. You can see it. Those of us, it's just like, oh, my God, the smoke coming out of it. I mean, I don't even want to get close to it. It just reeks of directly out of the pit of hell. I mean, death to this planet, engineered spiritual virus meant to shut us down and kill us. And then they just sit there hopping around, rejoicing when they're the biggest schmuck, chump idiots I've ever seen in my life. I mean, they are such born losers that they think they're actually part of the winning team. When history and everything shows and what's currently happening, that this system will personally tear its minions to part because they're totally unprotected spiritually. I mean, I just don't know how they don't see the incredible peril they're in because they're such cowards. But they're so cowardly, they convince themselves they're safe when they're in the most dangerous position they could be in. Go ahead, my friend. You know, I, I couldn't uh, agree more wholeheartedly. And even even passages in the Old Testament talk about all these rich and powerful people when they are in hell and they see Lucifer there too, and they're saying, "Is this a man that caused the nations to tremble?" I want to draw attention to something I received today, and I think it, it just received a, uh, a couple hours ago. So I want you to. Uh, I just posted a couple hours ago. It's a conversation, one paragraph about what they're doing to come take the guns away. Okay. It's between a guy named Jim and Michael. Uh, he said, the guy said, Steve, I sent a friend the link, the story about the testing gun confiscation in Illinois. He worked for the sheriff's department for 25 years. Here's his re uh, reply today. I would have said there's no way this is going to happen. My son worked with a man that told her his son, a Marine, was training for gun confiscation in a war in the boundaries of the U.S., his son has been training down south, and the dad spoke with him before November. And this was what the son told dad. Time to make sure your kit, in other words, your prepper supply, are ready and sound. Civil War II is almost ready to start. It sounds to me like, it sounds to me, when do you want to sit down and talk? Question mark. God help us, Michael. So, Alex, the thing is, look, we, we've laid out over and over and over thousands of hours of broadcasts. Thousands of documents, thousands of news links, thousands of interviews, okay, literally, and, and telling people from insiders this is coming. And it's, you know, it's the four monkeys, hear no evil, see no evil, uh, uh, what, speak no evil, and uh, certainly don't speak out against And evil. now it's and manifesting openly yes. as they prepare to go operational. And I'm going to say this, make no mistake. We're here at the castle gates. There's holes knocked through the armored door. There's uh, flames shooting out. There's rocks being hurtled over. Uh, and then we're sitting here with countless other patriots around the world, every race, color, and creed, trying to hold the gates up. And then all these trendies are sitting around bitching, going, I don't see any enemies. I don't see any problems. I don't see any takeover. Waiting for those gates to crumble 
and fall, undoubtedly, if it wasn't for Ron Paul and countless others, patriots out there over the years, exposing this from Barry Goldwater to you name it, we'd already be in this system. So I love how we're trying to hold it back. Undoubtedly, the globalists admit what the, the New Order is about 15 years behind. And then they're bitching at us. And now we've finally been pushed back. We're sliding. World government's being announced. We're all being verified. That's why they're bringing in the censorship now to shut us up and shut us down because now they know our credibility is about to explode. How do you see the brakes on this? Then we're going to calls. Well, um, you know, I can tell you something. Mushroom clouds speak louder than piss poor excuses, okay? I'm sorry for the word, but that's the only way I know how to explain it right now. Alex, it is insanity that people are hearing World War III, seeing World War III, hearing about overflights of, of different nations, bombers and submarines off our coasts, and, and still you've got a guy that goes on vacation and the Middle East is inflamed, and people, you know, I, I got to tell you something. Assad of Syria is the only guy standing up for Christians. The point is, is that if you can't even put two and two together to equal four, we go into Iraq, we totally destabilize it. We go into Libya, we totally destroy it and destabilize it. We have destabilized, destabilized, but it all fits the plan of global upheaval. In that global upheaval, a, a, a Western nation that turned from fighting uh, 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 terrorism has now turned internal, and all of the terrorists are inside the gate. The barbarians are outside the gate, and what we're fighting for is the last life, the last husband who gets it, the last wife who gets it. We're saying, God, people, and I'm saying, I'm, I'm praying, not using the name of the Lord in vain. I'm saying, God, help the people's eyes to be open. But the bottom line is when people embrace the occult, I can tell you this, Alex, on my, and, and i got to share this. I lay it out so clearly in Empire Beneath the Ice, how the Nazis won World War II. You cannot separate the darkest forces, everything that you consider evil, that you articulate as evil. You cannot separate that from what's going on in our government. And they brought it with Selling the, the baby Egypt. parts, funding the radical ISIS to kill the Christians. You see, the, you see our government go out of its way to do evil things, even though it hurts the interest of those elites, because it's not about money. It is about prosecuting a war and an old score. And so it's ancient Russia, it's ancient Syria. Not that they're even perfect, but they know in the globalist plan, they are slated for destruction. So they are fighting because well, they have not been fully taken under the spell of the new world order. Let's go to some calls here. Very well said, Steve Quayle. Let's talk to Ray in Iowa. Thank you for holding. Up next, Mike. Go ahead. Uh, this is uh, Ray in Iowa. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. Hey, listen, blessings, my brothers. Um, I, I had a question. Uh, I was stationed over in Germany during the Cold War. And, uh, you know, a lot of the rumors were that, that uh, Hitler had gotten out of there. In fact, you had talked about that earlier in the show, uh, Steve Quayle, that um, you had been following that on the History Channel, uh, Hunting Hitler. And I had been kind of following that as well. And I guess my question would be at this point is, Certainly, Putin or the, the the Russians must know that he got out of there. I mean, oh, they, do. they have. Excuse me. Yeah, they do. Stalin said, that, and I'll quote Stalin: "That bastard got away." And that's what even Putin. You know, you're 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 really onto something here. Putin made claims about they're not going to sit back and watch the resurrection of the Nazis. They will not sit back and do it. So what I think you're going for, caller, is a fact. Yes, they do. And Putin is starting to blow the lid. My guess is he's going to blow the lid on the whole Nazi control. And by the, the way, they, they studied that Hitler skull. It was a female skull. It's not even a male exactly. skull. Eisenhower said there's no evidence Hitler died. And then, look, even hunting Hitler, for the record, Alex, I started my book eight months before the first story broke on Hitler. So I would say this. I would say that people need to understand the occult the Luciferian agenda. You cannot, the, the Nazis opened the first stargates beyond the ancients, okay, in contemporary time, and people say, well, I don't believe in that. Well, it doesn't matter what you believe in. Every Native American site in the United States around the world has spirals indicating stargates. So I didn't mean to cut the collar off, but he's really on to something. And the Russians are ready to play that revelation soon, in my opinion. Well, you notice Putin's coming out saying global warming is a plan to take over the world and slay everybody. 
that the Western governments run the drug trade. I mean, Putin is exposing everything, and he wasn't doing that just a few years ago. But when they started shutting down Russia, putting the sanctions on, he really is spilling the beans on them. Uh, who do you think Putin is, and who are the Russians in this whole history? Because in mainline evangelical CIA-run influence Christianity, I'm not bashing evangelicals, that's who they targeted because it's such a good group of people, they try to pump that Russia's the enemy. And obviously right. Russia was a globalist evil created by the globalist. Uh, the Soviets were horrible. Communism is horrible. You look at what we have here today, that's exactly what they're now establishing. But, but what has Russia become now? Well, I think Putin has gone back to his, his Christian, when I say Christian, Russian Orthodox roots. I think he's shown remarkable restraint. I also believe that you've seen basically a topsy-turvy where, where the United States used to, quote, be uh, uh, Christian largely, you know, and no matter what the entity says, we were founded at least on Christian principles. The idea is that Putin now has the head uh, priest of the Russian Orthodox Church blessing his men and blessing uh, their, their takeover. He knows he has to stand against the uh, Islamic hordes and invasion. Also, Alex, I, want, I, I go on record as stating this. Ten years ago, I said everything I got in, in prayer from the Lord over that decade ago was that America becomes a hissing in, and, and is held in total contempt around the world. That's what you're seeing right now. And, and that's always been part that. of the larger plan is have us carry out the globalist agenda. Then we get the blame. Then the EU and the Chinese basically merge, giving us the blame for everything. And I do see in some of their plans, they do want to knock the U.S. out and Russia out in the end. Well, Russia knows the Chinese are its biggest uh, adversary. And let me share this. Strange bedfellows and the enemies, you know, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. That only goes as long as, uh, you know, you have a mutual enemy. Russia knows that it cannot compete with China's uh, uh, industrial base from the standpoint of sheer amount of population. But Russia leads in high energy physics and weapons. They have some of the most sophisticated systems. Their fighters aren't built uh, with Chinese parts. The point being our F-35 is. And, and look, every time, whether it's a Donald Cook forcing a nuclear sub boomer to surface or taking out aircraft, the Russians are saying, don't you understand what we can do? So I think Putin, I don't think he's rushing headlong into nuclear war, but I believe he knows that this government, under the control of the entities behind the curtain, are pushing for nuclear war. And he has a philosophy. I want people to hear this. The Russian philosophy is you strike first. Well, if you expand and look at all of this, we have crazy people running this country. And they really are out to get anybody who's self-sufficient. I mean, that's what it comes down to. They want you under their cult control. Let's uh, see who's been holding the longest here. Uh, let's go to Mike and then Chris. Mike, you're on the air from Texas. Welcome. Thank you, Alex. Uh, I just wanted to know if uh, you or Steve Quayle have heard of Dr. Stephen Greer. He uh, is trying to expose a secret government that... Uh, handles all the secret bases and, and things of like that. Yeah, I mean, I'm aware of that. Look, here's the deal. I can't get people to look at the National Security Act of 1947 that's public or the NGOs uh, or the continuity of government programs. It's all there and admitted. And all the people I see always talking about secret bases, this, stuff, that, it's all conjecture and hearsay. And then no one will look at all the admissions of what Eisenhower warned about in 1961 in his farewell address of the technological elite in a breakaway civilization. Rob Dew is coming up host of the fourth hour, and he's got a ton of breaking news and information he's going to be covering. I want to try to go to more of your calls in this segment and the next. I'm not going to belabor this, uh, but you hear my sponsors when I'm endorsing a product by name, and you also hear the products that I endorse that we sell at InfoWarsStore.com. Uh, the radio network are great folks. They've got their sponsors. I'm sure a lot of them are great. I can't speak for them. When you hear me say that Survival Shield Nation Iodine X2 has changed my life, it really did. When I talk about what Super Male Vitality, just a bunch of known uh, organic cold-pressed herbs has done for my energy, my libido, my weight loss. I mean, it's been staggering what's happened. Super Female Vitality. I mean, just give it a try. And then you're funding the operation. But I believe you're going to come back and get more because almost everybody does because it's so good. We have 15% off throughout the whole store. That's what it is. With promo code 
at the end of it. 